And welcome to the European Council in Brussels for Talking Europe on France 24. The most macabre travel agents in history, slave traders of the 21st century. That's how the Italian government describes the people smugglers who charge migrants a fortune to cross the Mediterranean in unseaworthy boats. An estimated 21,000 migrants have already arrived in Italy this year, and at least 1,700 of them died during the perilous journey. I'm joined at the European Council by Italy's Europe Minister Sandro Gozzi. Thank Hello. you for being with us. Thank you. And now, your Prime Minister, Matteo Renzi, uh, said that his country was at war uh, with migrant traffickers. He was very much uh, at the centre of an emergency EU summit here in Brussels uh, on uh, Thursday. All EU leaders agreed that it's time to make sure that such tragedies don't repeat themselves. We heard it so many times in the past. Why would it be different this time? I got the impression that this time there is a, a real awareness around Europe and the real, a real awareness among the European public opinions because what happened uh, in the last tragedy in the Mediterranean uh, really shocked our souls and not only in Italy. And uh, the fact that uh, all the head of state and government accepted to uh, meet a few days ago in Brussels around this extraordinary summit on, in, on, under the initiative of our Prime Minister Matteo Renzi in my view, give the sign that now deeds will follow words. It will be the first time, but Europe must finally demonstrate coherence with its uh, uh, treaties, uh, with uh, its uh, declarations, and also consistency uh, between uh, meetings and action. We are fed up with meetings which are not followed by concrete actions. Well, we're going to look at some of the options that are on the table, and we'll yeah. and you will. Tell me whether you think it will make a difference. Uh, well, let's first remember that at the time, in October 2013, your country yeah. uh, launched the Mare Nostrum uh, rescue operation after the Lampedusa tragedy. Uh, this operation uh, cost Italy 9 million per month and it was phased out in November last year. Why did the Italians decide to put an end to Mare Nostrum? Mare Nostrum was a reaction to another tragedy. Uh, it was a reaction which uh, it wasn't there to stay, but it was there to assume not only our responsibilities as Italy, our responsibilities for a continent as a whole, uh, while all the others were standing and watching. And we couldn't uh, accept to stand and watch while Europe was uh, somewhere else. Uh, it, during our semester, we obtain not only uh, to uh, um, have the consensus of all the government about one principle, which is fundamental. The Mediterranean is a common frontier, is a matter of common responsibilities. It requires a common action. But also for the first time, a truly European operation, uh, which uh, has replaced the um, Mare Nostrum operation, Triton operation. Since the very beginning, we have said that on one side, that was certainly a very good step, step ahead. On the other side, it was clear that it was not enough yeah, in terms of personnel, in terms of money, in terms of uh, geographical area of intervention, in terms of mandate. But now we have uh, not to scratch Triton operation, we had to build on the Triton operation now that there is a, a much stronger awareness of the fact but that Triton I, the was Europe never had... designed as a rescue operation. It's a border control operation. Now, EU leaders say that they will increase the uh, uh, financial resources uh, for, for, for Triton. Uh, but will it make a difference? Uh, NGOs are very worried. Uh, they say the, it will yeah. never replace Mare Nostrum. What we need is a pan-European Mare Nostrum. We're not quite there yet. We, have, uh, uh, we cannot remain on the uh, reaction phase. We have to build up a new strategic action phase with new measures. Among these new measures, there is certainly the strengthening of the Triton operation and by strengthening the Triton operation and while keeping our obligation according to international law to carry out search and rescue operations when uh, it, it, is, uh, it, is, uh, it is possible, it is necessary, I think that we give already a better answer compared to to a few weeks ago. And a beat to the that issue. Triton can but indeed save more lives? Together with that, sir, I think, I, I think that together we have to take tough and bold measures 
to dismantle the traffic of human beings. We have to go to the sources of this. We cannot leave these people who are fleeing away from wars, from persecutions, or simply from uh, famine uh, in the end of uh, uh, this new kind of slavery of the 21st century. This is a crime against humanity that the traffickers of human beings are committing every day, few kilometers away from the European coast, and we must take bold measure to dismantle that. Third, and this is also something which requires an immediate follow-up after the summit, dialogue and cooperation with the country of origin and transit. Operational measures must be followed now to this principle that we set of dialogue and cooperation with the country of origin and transit of the flows. Now, you mentioned the uh, migrant uh, traffickers, smugglers. Uh, let's watch uh, our report as we'll see more and more people are desperate uh, to leave uh, places like Somalia, uh, Syria, uh, struck by war, of course. Uh, most set off from Libya on rickety old boats, a very perilous journey. Our report brought to us by Oliver Ferry. The latest tragedy in the Mediterranean has underlined the scale of the crisis in Europe's waters. 31,500 migrants have arrived from North Africa so far this year. 13,500 were rescued in one week in April alone. 900 migrants died attempting the crossing between the 1st of January and the 15th of April. Political instability in Libya has helped facilitate the flow of trafficking as people, many of them from Somalia and Eritrea, try to make the crossing to Europe. Libyan officials say they are overwhelmed. We fear that in the coming period, if the state does not intervene decisively and effectively, if the humanitarian organizations and nations do not stand together as one and provide us with the necessary resources, a major humanitarian crisis may occur. Traffickers or snakeheads transport migrants in overcrowded boats, often for large sums. Many of the hopeful migrants find it is too late to back out once they board. Uh, some migrants told us uh, once you pay you cannot go back. I mean, even if, if some migrants see that the weather conditions are bad, the, the vessels are really unsafe and worthy, they change their mind, but cannot do that. So they are forced to get on board with sticks, with guns. Those that have made it to Italy say conditions on board the boats are perilous. It is not good. It is small. Also, it's a lot of people, 360 people. In one tip. European leaders have said more must be done to combat traffickers, but migrant advocates doubt that this alone will be enough to deter people willing to risk their lives to get to Europe. Now, you said that it's time to crack down on people smugglers, on, on the traffickers who mostly operate from Libya. Your Prime Minister wants to be given a military mandate for Europe to possibly destroy the vessels, the boats that are being used uh, by these traffickers. Britain has offered to send uh, three ships and three helicopters. Uh, can Europe win this war? Because this is going to be a war. We must, first of all, uh, we must decide that it is our responsibility to tackle this issue. And our responsibility as a government, as a European Union through, through the common, uh, common security and defense policy. And also we have to work at the UN level, United Nations level. We have to work in the Security Council. We have to act also the instruments which are available at United Nations level. And uh, we must be determined. It is not a matter of being optimistic or pessimistic in these cases. In this, the, so you, uh, it must be strategy. done in compliance with the international of law. Of course, That's what uh, that us. was clearly said in the summit. Uh, every action that we will take, it must be in full compliance with international law and it is complementary to the strengthening of Triton and to other positive action in, the, in, uh, in Africa and in Europe. But this, it, the element, the, the real new element of the summit is that there was an agreement and there was a, a commitment to start to fight against the smugglers. And there are examples also, also of joint European action. Uh, take, for example, the Atalanta mission to fight against piracy, in piracy Somalia. in the Indian Ocean or around Somalia. The, the possible, are possible action of single government in compliance with international law. This is something we, which was 
very new and very important, which has been discussed at the summit. Uh, now, let's talk about what you do with those migrants who are at the moment in Europe, some of them filing for asylum. Uh, at the moment, five countries out of a total of 28 EU member states take in more than 50% of all asylum, uh, all asylum seekers. Sweden, Germany are very generous, but a number of countries aren't stepping up to the plate. Will this change? It must change. It must change. It was addressed at the summit. Some step ahead uh, has been taken. Of course, it, everything remains on a voluntary basis. 5,000 people are to be relocated across Europe. We Do you must... feel that countries like the Czech Republic, Slovakia, the Baltic states will do their fair share of, 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 of the that, job. I think that everybody uh, must assume the responsibility as members as member of the European Union uh, when we are all affected and uh, we are all facing together this tragedy. So you cannot uh, be a free rider in the Union. You cannot be in the Union only accepting the be taking the benefits and not assume a responsibility when we, you are faced with such a huge human tragedies as we are facing now in the Mediterranean. So I hope that uh, uh, even off on a voluntary basis, uh, there will be 28 member states with which, which take on responsibility and will not leave five member states uh, to do once again the job for the rest. This is not fair, this is not acceptable anymore for the European public opinion, and this is something on which we must work. And this is something also which should push us to develop new, truly European migration policies and a truly European asylum system. Which is totally lacking at the moment, which because the reality the is moment. that you have 28 and asylum policies. We are, yeah, we are all pay, paying a huge cost for the non-Europe in this case, in, in this field. But why uh, the, 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 the corps in the Mediterranean are the result and a, 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 an acceptable human cost of the absence of Europe in this field. Uh, the uh, uh, too excessive burden that Italy is taking, is assuming uh, in, the, in the border, in Sicily, in Lampedusa, is a, a consequence of the lack of Europe. And also the very heavy burden of the German, of the Swedes, just to take uh, two huge examples on the asylum seekers, is the result of the absence of truly common European policy. Now, what is the problem? That we, we could do it. We don't have to change the treaties. We don't have to adopt new formal rules. We just have to implement what is written in the treaty, what our parliament, our people through referendum have already accepted. The Lisbon Treaty is there, but we are not implementing it. And this is why all the government must show a much stronger determination and must develop a much longer, long-term approach. They, so far, uh, there has been too short-sightedness around Europe on this issue. Now, you told me that European citizens can no longer accept the status quo. Having said that, you know the political reality in a number of countries, including your country. Anti-immigration parties are dominating uh, the political agenda. It's a hard sell to tell the Czechs, the Poles, that they have to take in more migrants. How will you sell this idea to the Europeans? If we continue on this, along these lines, if we continue without a truly common uh, European approach, both to, em to the emergency, the asylum seekers, and uh, to the structural, uh, to, to the more structural problems, such as the development of common migration policies, we will all lose. Because it is clear that this is a phenomenon that must be addressed, can be addressed only at European level. It's only at European level that you can show a real uh, uh, added value of, uh, of Europe. It's only at European level that you can find the instrument to tackle this phenomenon. Otherwise, they will be spread illegally in an irregular way all over Europe. It, it, it is, a, it is a, a false hope to think that this will remain a problem only of Italy, Germany and Sweden. There are no more fortresses in Europe, you're telling me. Uh, does Europe need a US-style immigration system with a green card to make sure that those who can contribute uh, and those who are willing to integrate 
don't have to go through these uh, 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 smugglers. In my view, yes. In my view, it is clear that we have to draw distinctions between on this, because on this boat, you've got some which are potentially asylum seekers because they flee away from persecution, from war. Uh, there are other which are economic migrants and that without, without uh, a, a, a common uh, European migration policy we have always a problem of uh, shall we accept them uh, according to, to a national law, what shall we do, uh, shall we repatriate them to which country, I mean it is clear that uh, we need uh, a sort of green, uh, green card US style policy at, uh, at a European level. Today we have 28 different national migration policies plus a, the 29th policy. Some uh, directive which talk about blue card, which talk about uh, a specific uh, a channel of access for qualified migrants. It is clear that this cannot work and it is clear that we shouldn't follow the line of the populist, the line of the extremists, because it is the line which goes against our national interest, goes against the interest of the public opinion, because it doesn't solve the problem. We want to solve the problem of the migration, because migration is a problem today. We can do it only by developing new European policy. All the other solutions are false solutions, and tomorrow, if we follow the Marine Le Pen, the Matteo Salvini style, we will pay a, a, a very huge price, the double the price that we are paying today. Sandro Gozzi, I remind our viewers that you are Italy's uh, Europe Minister. You travelled to Brussels with your Prime Minister, Matteo Renzi. Thank you very much for having found the time to talk to us. Thank you. And thank you for watching the first part of Talking Europe. Please stay with me. I return just after the news break in about 10 minutes on France 24.